I was in touch with Brunton, and he admitted that he went to Bhagavan and apologized. How beautifully Bhagavan corrected them and nudged them back into their sadhana. Both Paul Brunton and Munagala Venkatamaya attained self-realization in their later years, because this was Bhagavan's purpose. Horizontal expansion took place when Munagala Venkatamaya and Brunton popularized Bhagavan's teachings, and Bhagavan gave them vertical expansion. For this, Chinnaswami was used like a rough washerman's stone to beat away their flaws. This is something that Munagala himself told me. He used Chinnaswami as a washerman's stone. We all blame Chinnaswami, but it was Bhagavan saving us through him. There are so many instances I could share, but one concerning Anamalai Swami is especially important. Anamalai Swami was responsible for masonry at the ashram, but could construct only ordinary buildings. When Chinnaswami began the construction of a temple, specialists were brought in from all over South India. After the construction started, there was a technical difficulty which Anamalai Swami could not resolve but he still wanted things done his way. The temple specialist and Chinnaswami did not agree with him, and he was told to leave. This is what Anamalai Swami shared with me later. For all outward purposes, it is true that Chinnaswami quarreled with me and dispensed with me, but I realized later that I needed this treatment. Otherwise, I would not have been an e eternal builder inside the ashram all my life. Recognizing this, Bhagavan commanded me not to come within the ashram premises anymore. The fact that it was not a reprimand from Bhagavan was proved when Bhagavan visited me almost every day at my residence in the sadhu community at Palakutu and encouraged me in my austere living, sadhana, and seclusion. What a blessing it was to have Bhagavan personally instructing me alone in my cottage. All this I can honestly say I owe to Chinna Swami for firing me. I plunged inward and had the inner vision that our Bhagavan is truly the I Am. Vishwanatha Swami explained to me why all the senior devotees went to Palakotu. We did that so that we could pursue our sadhana. Bhagavan approved of this. He would ask us, in which way are you going to build your hut? Bhagavan would also encourage us to go to the streets and beg for food. This enabled us to be with Bhagavan all the time and made us what we are today in a state of realization. This was possible only because we left the ashram. Bhagavan wanted things this way. Vishwanatha Swami was the worst affected by Chinna Swami's tough demeanor. He once had to go without food for three days. One of the kitchen assistants took him aside inside the dining hall through the kitchen and made him sit along with the others. When he was about to eat, Chinnaswami came in and pulled him out. Bhagavan witnessed all this without objecting to it. Strangely, during Chinnaswami's last days, it was none other than Vishwanatha Swami who assisted him. Surprised, I asked him, how could you do that after being so deeply hurt and insulted? And Vishwanatha Swami said, when I was in Dindagul, Bhagavan appeared to me in a dream and asked me to come to Ramana Ashramam. I immediately left for the ashram. It was 1953, and Bhagavan had already dropped his body. I had no idea why Bhagavan asked me to come. When I arrived, I found Chinnaswami fatally sick and with nobody to attend to him. I felt that this was the purpose for which Bhagavan had asked me to come. I waited on him day and night, nursed him and bathed him. One day, Chinnaswami held my hand and begged for forgiveness. 
It is sad, but Chinnaswamy suffered gravely for his actions. Bhagavan had noticed all his mistakes and made him physically suffer and expediate. Chinnaswamy spent his last two days looking at Bhagavan's picture, all the time chanting, Ramana, Ramana, Ramana. At the time of his death, he stretched out his arms with his eyes closed, his face serene, happy, and luminous. Bhagavan had come to take him and get him absorbed in Aranachala. Personally speaking, Chinnaswamy has always been very kind to me. He would brush my teeth every morning, take me to Bhagavan, and make me prostrate before him, saying, Here is Bhagavan, our God. I am grateful to him for taking me to Bhagavan's presence, the sacredness of which I didn't understand then, but which I now gratefully remember. When I was four or five years old, I used to run away from home and go to Ramana Ashraman all alone. In those days, the streets were dark and desolate. The first time I did this, Chinnaswamy was taken aback. He asked me, why did you come? And I said, I had a disagreement with my father, so I walked away. He immediately took me to Bhagavan and said, He has walked all the way alone without fear. I have already informed his father. Bhagavan looked at me and gave a mischievous smile, which I remember very well, which I could not understand then. Chinnaswamy then took me to the office where he used to sleep on a comfortable bed and offered it to me. Why did Bhagavan smile at me? I asked. When you were two years old, you got into an empty bullock cart which was yoked to a bull. Its driver, too, wasn't around. Startled by a visitor suddenly opening an umbrella, the bull sped away with the cart into the town. We frantically searched for you in the ashram, but you could not be found. We went to Bhagavan and informed him that you were missing. Bhagavan said, What can we do? Running away from home is built into our family. What did he mean by that? I asked, puzzled. Bhagavan's father had an elder brother called Venkatesa Ayer. He had also run away from home on a spiritual quest, Chinnaswamy informed me. When I was in charge of constructing Bhagavan Samadhi Hall, I encountered many problems. One day, Mrs. Teliyarkan told me, all these problems will be solved. I looked at her questioningly, and she continued, Last night, Bhagavan appeared to me in my dream and said, Tell Ganesan to take up the construction of Chinnaswami Samadhi alongside and everything will be all right. With Bhagavan's grace, I managed to construct his and Nirajananda Swami Samadhis simultaneously. The consecration ceremony was done in 1967 of all three Samadhis, Mother Azagamal, Bhagavan's, and Chinnaswami's. Being involved in building Chinnaswami Samadhi, I was going to place a stone tablet which would simply read, Nira Jananda Swami, with his birth and death dates. Instead, the stone cutter sent me a tablet in which was etched, Nira Jananda Swami, absorbed in Aranachala on 29-1- 1953. This thrilled me, and later in the 15 samadhis that were built, I used a similar tablet for each devotee, such as Chadwick or Murunganar and Kunju Swami. Let us remember Chinna Swami, one of the biggest boulders that rolled down from Arunachala to serve our Master, the Master whose only mission if there even could be considered one, is to make his own state available to all of us, the state of I am.